Uh, okay, so let me introduce myself again, even if Thomas made an outstanding job with that. Uh, I work in Mozilla on something called Firefox OS. How many of you ever heard of the project? It was co called boot to gecko back then, like a month ago or so. Okay, so for those who didn't, uh, Firefox OS is a mobile operating system, new mobile operating system, something like, let's say, Android or iOS, but better, because all the applications are written, like, even the system itself is written in JavaScript and HTML5 and things like that. I have one phone if someone wants to try, but unfortunately it's run out of battery, so I need a USB cable as well, and I forgot it from my hotel. But if you have one and want to try it, just grab me after the talk. So I live in Paris now, and I'm a little bit disappointed because of that, because I thought that I would like, eat snails and frog, eggs, uh, frog uh, legs all the time, but unfortunately we eat mostly Indian food in there, like all the time, it's national French food now. But I'm from Poland, the not so small country in the middle of Europe. And I organized On Game Start, that's the first HTML5 gaming conference, and that was our, let's say, mascot for the last year's edition, but in the next year's edition, it gets a little bit like more realistic. That's the youngest brother of the guy I showed you before. And I create a lot of ridiculous stuff in the web because I think that web development is not just our job. It's part of our lifestyle. And doing like, crazy shit in your life is really important. So that's why I made that's my most famous demo. It's CSS Nyancat, create uh, without any single line of JavaScript or any single image. Like every dot in here is just a dot. Those are gradients. The mouth is just rotated E letter. Or uh, each star is made from out of four dips and things like that. It's animated also. OK, so what about the face detection? I want to uh, present you, first of all, uh, a a little bit of history, how I uh, first time get like interest in, in face detection. So uh, there are like internet is have some social parts, and the most social things in internet are games, social networks like Facebook, and dating sites. Dating sites are like some kind of social networks, but really specific. So uh, I, a couple of years ago, I created a dating site for, uh, we had a startup in Ukraine, but there is like really a lot of dating sites all over the internet. So why our idea was different? So we used face detection to, let's say, not judge the people, but to uh, connect people together. So let's say someone uploads a lot of photos on itself. So our algorithm, was looking for a face, first of all, then for some characteristic points on face, like eyes, nose, and mouth, then calculates size or distance between those points, and that gives us some number value. And then we connect people with the same num number, right? It's <laughs> it wasn't really... Oh, and we, of course, said that it's... Uh, old uh, Haitian uh, magic formula of connecting people and uh, with analyzing your face, right? But it was bullshit, it was just like adding and, that's, and dividing and that's all. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not doing it again. And if you, w oh, fortunately, I'm not doing it again. Uh, because uh, if you wonder why I gave a title like that for my talk, you need to run your own dating site and you will know that after a couple of months, really. Uh, <laughs> okay, but let's, uh, how actually face detection works? So we have something called HAR Cascade Classifier, and that's a, let's say, detector algorithm that, for, that is looking for something on the image. So we need, first of all, some definition of the object we want to, we want to uh, find on a picture. It, it shouldn't necessarily be face. You can look for whatever you want. And uh, so the definition of the face is, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I will show you how the file with definition of face looks like. So 
that's uh, wait a moment. Yeah. So that's the file, the JSON file that des describes face for for this algorithm. And as you can see, it's quite long. Okay, I mean 68,000 number lines of JSON thing, right? So it's quite big. But with uh, if we have this object definition, then there is something. There there are some small. Oh, it's you cannot see that in here probably, but those are four types of features, and. Everyone has two or more, uh, okay, just two types of two parts. One is white and one is black, and here is like that. And here we have two whites and one black in, in the middle, and in here is oh, the same. We have two black and two white. And after that, we apply those features on the photo and calculate the difference between the black part, the, the, the pixel values between the blacks the black part and the white part and when we uh, then connect this to this object definition we know that we probably find the face there and I will show you how it actually looks like oh I will not <laughs> no I will <laughs> I hope <laughs> So the funny part in here starts around a minute. Okay, yeah. So we are scanning the image and applying the features on in every single frame, in every single, uh, in every possible uh, part. And you can see it now. It it took more time to calculate everything if the algorithm thinks that it finds face. So now we have a border in here because it finds face. Also in here. And and also in here because uh, and we need like five or four points like that to be sure that it's actually a face, not something else. And it of course starts uh, with some given size. Then we the, this this active uh, part. I mean, and after scanning the whole image, it changed the size and scan again and things like that. So it's really let's say maybe not hard, but it took a long time. So there are a lot of uh, different uh, optimization techniques, but yeah, we don't care. And actually, with different uh, object definitions, you can find different things on pictures, like cat's face, if you want it, or a ball on the during the football match or cars or whatever. It just dep the, the algorithm is the same. The only thing that differs is the object definition file. So what about the bro oh, sorry, what about the browsers? Uh, how it actually works inside the browsers. So let's we have the image, right? After that we can draw this image on on canvas with draw image uh, function and then start our algorithm and find the face on it. Because you cannot manipulate every single a pixel of the image you need to do it on canvas right so how it actually works and how to cheat on the or is it pos is it really secure algorithm or not let's track this thing okay let's take a photo of some famous actress and yes so it finds one face in like 500 milliseconds but sometimes it's hard to find a face if, for example, y you have a bird or glasses. So let's try Santa Claus. Yeah, and <laughs> as I said, it was too hard for the algorithm to find a face. It sometimes happens. But the most creepy part of that is when it finds a face in place where, the f where there are not faces. Like, <laughs> this is the photo from an uh, event in Berlin, f Firefox Free Hugs. And I found something like that in here, and <laughs> I'm <laughs> and I'm thinking if it sees something that we cannot, or, <laughs> <laughs> or it's just an error of the algorithm. <laughs> but yeah, to be honest, I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, okay, there is a holy war. 
in web industry between HTML5 and open technologies and something called Flash. And sometimes, like for a lot of years, Flash was winning most of the time. But now we are doing quite well. And the, uh, okay, I'm not really proud of it, but I have a lot of uh, friends that are Flash developers. And always when I said, okay, but why do you think your technology is better than mine? The first answer all the time was, you don't have access to your web camera, right? And it's really important to have an access to your camera. So yeah, we have now, right? And you probably most of you heard of Get User Media. And I prepared a simple demo of the technology. So that are just simple puzzles. OK, yeah, it's me in here. And you need to, mm -hmm. I'm not really good at games, even if I'm a game developer. But yeah, the main idea is that, okay, and you can cheat if you don't know where to, oh, yeah, it's my hand in here. Yeah, sure. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in your face, Flash developers, we have access to <laughs> web camera now and we can do some crazy stuff with that. So, okay, but what about games? So, uh, okay, so I, I, I showed you that it's possible already to have an access to your camera. So you can also apply the uh, face detection algorithm di directly on the stream, right, on the video. And so uh, the On Game Start conference is, uh, is a conference about games. So it would be like really boring if we will just made a regular site. So every year we are preparing a game instead of site. So, uh, So, uh, this year's, uh, last year's game was just a sim simple 2D platformer. You control the guy and look for the speaker. So, there is one. You can talk to the speaker and he will introduce himself. That said, talked about what he will talk about on the conference, blah, blah. If you're really lazy, you could just click on the face and transform to the, to the speaker. And yeah, there are some keys to collect and doors to open and spikes that kills you and things like that. So that was last year, but it was just a simple 2D game. So if you were like a regular game developer, you wrote games like that in 70s, right? And so this year, uh, for, the next, oh, okay, for the next year's edition, we prepared the 3D WebGL game in the browser. And so it's more like the idea is the same still. Uh, you have a planet on which you, in which you, uh, you control you control the guy, and you are looking for speakers. Let's find some. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, there are some stars. Oh, that's my favorite part ever. Wait for it. Wait. Oh no, no, that wasn't. Oh, there is some speaker. Okay, so you can talk to the speaker, and he will say, "Hello, nice to meet you. My name is blah blah. I will talk about blah blah. See ya. Great, right? Uh, okay, so we will use this. We will use this guy." in the next example, so remember him. Okay, but no, I, I just want to show you one thing. Yeah, oh, well, no, 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 not that. Yeah, gravity. <laughs> Every single star has its own gravity. Yeah, okay. Uh, we don't care, but uh, so how we can use face detection in games? That's the guy I showed you before, the call, uh, Colin uh, Hoover from, from the game. We talked with him there, right? So, uh, first of all, I hope these examples are working because I wrote them today at 5 a.m. First of all, we, We have the access, okay, yeah, it finds out my face. And it stops looking and stops uh, waiting for the stream if it finds a face on this, uh, on the stream, right? So that's the first point. Boo, oh, no, that <laughs> that's something <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first point, right? 
we have the face catch it's a little bit dark in here so but I hope it will work after that if we have the face already we have the texture of the 3d model right and there is a hole inside the face uh, that sounds ridiculous but you know what I mean and so we can start detecting face and putting it uh oh okay more or less <laughs> You, you get the point, right? And after that, we can put the texture on the model. Yeah, so it actually... <laughs> it actually detects the eyes and put the eyes inside the glasses, and then the nose and put more or less nose where the nose should be. And the same with mouth. So, and that's the really nice let's say, thing to uh, make your own character in the game. You don't need anything. You just need the access to the camera. And that's all, right? Whoa, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you get the point. And also, but okay, that's so it could be useful in generating your own character, personalized character for your game. But what about uh, using, not, not using the game controllers, but your ugly face as a game controller? So is it possible? And actually, uh, there is a Node.js competition uh, every year called Node Knockout. How many of you heard of it? Oh, like six person, great. Uh, so it's like 48 hours hackathon globally from all, for all, all over the world. And you need just to write something that uses Node.js. And this year, uh, I unfortunately didn't write anything, but I, I was one of the judges. And I found that the best thing ever. So the guys wanted to make something different, something original. So they made Pong by played with your head. <laughs> and it actually works. <laughs> So it's called head pong, yeah, how surprising. <laughs> and you can play well So where's the graphics? <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. Okay, I will I will get back to that later because it doesn't want to work. I have no idea why. But the the point is to you know, stir, uh, control the the thing with your head, and that's more or less the really simple idea. But I'm really ah okay, whatever. You need to trust me that it works. <laughs> and so okay, but that's just the head, and it's a little bit hard to play a game with your head, right? So lazy Americans that don't want to run outside discovered something called Kinect, so you can now jog inside your living room. Uh, really great idea. So what about implementing something like that in JavaScript using all the techniques we already, uh, I already presented? So there is a library, open source library, called Tracking.js, and I think that it's the, the name explains everything, right? It's just a tracking library for... Uh, so... Oh, great. So it's really simple because everything you need to n know is just a color you want to track. And you put the... Okay, some funny example. Oh, yeah. So it tracks... You, you just said that you, for example, want to track uh, magenta or cyan and it's and you have in every frame you have the uh, position on the on the screen of those colors so okay that's stupid example yeah drawing is stupid as well but what about controlling Minecraft right with uh, just two bulbs or whatever so if we will unfortunately I don't have PlayStation moving here but we can connect all of the things and create something like Kinect. And if you have too, ma too much of your free time, let's do it, really. But what about something different? Can we use other, 
objects as a gaming uh, as a con game controllers. Like you remember this slide, right? That you need object definition and you can detect every single object on the screen. So what about yeah, internet loves cats, right? And we have something called Kittydar, and that's the cat's face detection online tool. And <laughs> everything in the internet is about cats, right? So I don't have any cats images in here, but okay, and I think there are no cats in this image. Yeah. So it's it works. It detects the okay. It detects a little bit more. Oh no. Yeah, just one, no. Right? So, uh, in my free time, I created something with my friend who is unfortunately not in here. He has a cat and I don't, unfortunately. So, we create a game s controlled by a cat's head. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you can use your animal as your machine gun or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any cat with me to show that, and the code is quite ugly now, so I think we will publish the code next month or so, but it actually works, and it's fun as hell, but yeah, it, uh, he has a lot of scratches on the hands now, but it kind of works. So, uh, it, like, two sentences of summary, uh, where we can actually use face detection in real life examples. So first of all, easy photo tagging. So it's fa that's the most, uh, let's say, popular way, right? Facebook use it to check the face of, of uh, every people on the, uh, every uh, yeah, human on the photo that you upload to your profile, right? And you can just choose, uh, connect faces to, to the names. Uh, Games. So I showed you uh, that it's possible to control game or doing uh, your own character using that. And for example, I found one Android game that scans your face and said if you are a human or a vampire, and you you d you played different race back then, right? After that, so or it identifying the TV shows. Which TV show is that? I love you, really. <laughs> Yeah, that's my favorite show. And so there is a tool already, uh, a web tool, in which you can just start uh, a little, like, five or ten seconds of TV show. And it, re it not it only detects the face, but it recognizes the face of the actors and then connect to the movie database and check if those actors play together in some TV series and then display you the title. And, of course, security, that's really... Uh, not so popular for now, but I hope in the future we could forget about all the passwords and we can log into some services with our faces. I'm not sure how secure is that, but it's possible. So thank you. That was more or less everything I wanted to say. Sorry, is Mozilla going to use face detection to unlock phones? Oh, uh... You know, we don't have it in like we don't we are not working on it now, but it's open source, it's on GitHub, so you can and we have the camera and the phone, so feel free to do it and send me a pull request. How do you actually uh define that JSON file for you know getting the regions of the face that it has to match and stuff? How do you create that file? And is can it be automated in any way? So uh yes. There are Python tools for that, but uh, like you need a lot of photos as a, like samples, and exactly showed what do you want to detect on the photo, and after you know computation and compiling everything, it just generates file like that. But this file, uh, actually, I. Uh, just make the JSON file out of XML that is uses OpenCV library for C. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit cheating, but easier. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much.